hello guys so welcome back to another vlog and so for today's video we will be talking about this ic evaporator what are the most common cause of having an ice in the evaporator what are the solutions to solve this kind of problem so come and join me in this new learning So we have three rooms in our provision refrigeration system. These are the meat room, fish room, and vegetable room. As you can see, the meat room and the fish room are in range except for the vegetable room. So I have decided to go inside the vegetable room and check why is it that it is not in range. And upon checking, the evaporator is filled with ice. And then I compare the situation to the meat room and the fish room. And checking the evaporators of these two rooms, they do not have the ice build up on their evaporators. So in this situation, I am ruling out the possibility that the problem is coming from the common system. By the way, the meat room and the fish room has the defrost system. This timer will automatically set and defrost each room except for the vegetable room. The vegetable room doesn't have heaters installed. So in order for us to sow the ice, we need to do a manual defrost. So in order for us to do that, we need to remove the fuse so that the electrical motor on the evaporator will stop. And we will use a fresh water to sow the ice. So what would be the reason why we have a lot of ice in the evaporator coil? Number one is lack of defrost procedure. But in our case, the vegetable room is really don't have the defrost system. As of now, it is set to positive 6 degrees Celsius. So we are ruling out this cause as this one is running perfectly even without defrost procedure in the vegetable since the beginning. The second reason is because of moisture from unpacked items but the last time that we took provision is almost 10 days ago so we are also ruling out this cause the third on my list is the moisture from air ingress into room through fissures or open door so i have double checked the structure of the door the tightness of the lock and the rubber seal from the door if there is a deformity and checking on it i don't see any irregularity on the door the next on the list is the evaporator airflow this includes the dirty evaporator coils damaged fins or even the electrical motor is defective so I continuously saw the eyes on this evaporator and check the fins and if there is dirt on them. And then I started checking the electrical motor if it is rotating in correct direction or if the speed is enough to have a good airflow onto the system. After clearing the eyes, I can see that there are some fins which are already deformed. But I can still say that this is not the main reason why this evaporator is really filled with ice. 
So the next on my list is the refrigerant supply to the evaporator is too small because of too high superheat. So I check the condition of the thermal expansion valve. And upon checking, I saw that the expansion valve of the vegetable room is filled with ice. So my plan is to clear this expansion valve and run it again to see how much time it requires for the build up of the ice. So after running for about a minute, just like that, there is already a formation of ice onto the expansion valve. There are some other reasons why we have icy or frost on our evaporator coils. I will put the other reasons at the end of this video, but for now, let us focus in fixing this thermal expansion valve. You might be wondering why I'm already suspecting the expansion valve of the vegetable room. This is mainly because we only have one compressor that is running for the whole system. And this compressor will go to the condenser and then all the way to the filter dryer. And the flow of refrigerant will only be separated after each expansion valve. So if the expansion valve of the fish room is in good condition without ice and the fish room is in range, and then if the expansion valve of the meat room has no ice and the meat room is in range, and if the expansion valve of the vegetable room has ice on it and the vegetable room evaporator is filled with ice and the vegetable room temperature is out of range, so the only thing that separate, separates on the whole system is these expansion valves. They will all meet on the same line after each room and the flow of Freon will again circulate in the same manner. So only from this line all the way to the room of vegetable that we're having a problem. So to solve our situation, we need to set the thermostatic expansion valve to a lower superheat setting. Please take note that the TXV cannot be adjusted open or closed. It is a modulating valve. Turning the adjustment stem clockwise will only increase the spring pressure causing a higher superheat. And turning the adjustment stem counterclockwise will decrease spring pressure reducing superheat. So we adjusted this stem a little bit counterclockwise and see the reaction of the expansion valve after running for some time. After running the system for 4 hours, this is the condition of the expansion valve. The ice buildup is not that much anymore and checking the temperatures of our rooms, the vegetable room went in range. So all rooms are now in range and let's see and check the condition of the evaporator coil. It is imperative to always study the piping diagram of your refrigeration system as to this provision refrigeration system, we have a common line and a separate line for each other. As you can see, the evaporator is still free from ice. So after adjusting the superheat setting of our expansion valve, this is now in good condition. So now let's go back to the list of the main reason why we have the IC evaporator. The first list that I gave you before the expansion valve is applicable to this system that we have, having three rooms with one compressor running. But for those who only have one room on their refrigeration system, one of other reasons is because if you have a low refrigerant level on the system. Another reason is because of refrigerant supply to evaporator too small because of partial loss of valve charge. 
The other reason is because of refrigerant supply to evaporator too small because of dirt strainer partially blocked. So I might miss some of the reasons why we have frost or ice on the evaporator. If you have your other reasons, feel free to give a comment below. So that's it guys. I hope you learned something from this video and this is your Lucky Jake and see you.